As soon as we jumped on that flight, as soon as we like, it was the last flight going out before they closed the border. Wow. I would have been stuck in England. I'd probably be over at Sting's house or something in one of his cabins. <laughs> <laughs> Stranded. Shaggy, how are you? How are you doing Much in love, quarantine? Man. I'm good, um, surprisingly, to be honest with you, because mm -hmm. uh, I actually thought it would be worse than, <laughs> than, it, than it ended up being. I've, uh, you know, started to, to, to get back to some of my, my earlier talents, you know, cooking, cleaning, <laughs> laundry, <laughs> doing, la doing laundry, stuff like that, you know? What is Shaggy cooking these days? Oh, everything, everything, I mean, you mm -hmm. know. Um, the greatest thing is, whatever you don't remember, there is YouTube. <laughs> it's so true, yeah. <laughs> You were on tour um, when all of this started unfolding. So yeah. how are you gonna how how do you look back on on that time? Because you know we really all of us didn't know what was going on, right? It was like a day by day, second by second, figuring it all out. To be honest with you, when I was in the UK uh, on the Blast Off tour, we're in front of twenty thousand people every night. There were tons of people backstage. I always thought that when when I was watching the pandemic happen in like in Italy and all of these places, I was mm -hmm. like. Well, the UK ain't taking it serious at all. Every, everything is business as usual. I just thought it was like easy, you know, because I was in the UK. And then the next day, my tour manager is like, okay, we're supposed to leave the following day and pack up, but I want to leave right after the show. And we're not leaving out of Birmingham. We're going straight to London and get on a straight flight. And it's the best decision he could have made because as soon as we jumped on that flight, as soon as we like, it was the last flight going out before they closed the border. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That, I mean, so we were locked. I would have been stuck in England. I'd probably be over at Sting's house or something in one of his cabins. <laughs> <laughs> Stranded. Not, well, not a bad way to uh, quarantine in Sting's house. He's wonderful, man. I think he's uh, getting a little antsy, of course, because he's, he's, you know, he's the hardest working man I know in show business. But he's over there in, uh, in, in Lake House having a, a wonderful time. And now uh, he's, you know, he's got every amenity that he needs. So. <laughs> you know, this, you know, he's holding up pretty good. <laughs> There's a whole new generation um, knowing your music and TikToking to your songs and, yeah. and knowing you from Sebastian in the Little Mermaid live musical. So how do you feel like like Shaggy is just just Shaggy, just Shaggy is just Shaggy. You know, they're, they're, yeah. you're just you're just timeless. Well, the things I me mean, the way this I think the way to stay timeless is not to be you know cookie cut or put into a box. And mm -hmm. I've always, in the beginning of my career, I've always tried not, I, I'm allergic to the status quo. So when we did Bombastic, there was nothing on the radio that sounded like it either. You know, it was just so unique. You're like, what the hell is this? But it was just so, um, so crazy. When we did It Wasn't Me, we're, we were at that time in NSYNC and Britney Spears kind of mode in 2000 when that came out, you know what I mean? And here comes this song that people are like, I don't know what he's saying, I don't know what this is, I don't know what this sound is, but it was just great. Mr. Boombastic, we were lucky to get the Levi's ad in the UK that spawned it, you know? And then in America, wow. it just kind of happened. Love Me Love Me was a, a, a an album track on how Stella got her groove back. The Mary J. Blige single was the was the main single and it, that didn't really, that didn't work at radio. And because Janet was on this, they played it and that got us through the door and that became, so there's a little bit of luck in everything. I love that you brought up Janet. Did you, were you two in the studio together or you were, you're not, you were separate when you recorded I, that I, track? I think I met, I, I think I met Janet once in passing at, at I think it was like at the Grammys. And okay. um, it was kind of an awkward meeting because I, I, at that time I was young and a little annoyed that she didn't come in the video and I had to take Janet off for the rest of the territory. And, I had Samantha Cole sing the hook for like the UK and and Canada and it was just it, it was just stupid at the time and you know I was young and angry and then the record became number one and at the time when I met her I was like you know at it wasn't me and 10 million records and I was the man and I'm walking down the hallway and I saw her and I'm like yeah whatever yeah <laughs> just young and dumb you know. You know, from everything that I that I know, she's been a sweet pe sweet person to a lot of people. So you know, I know it's, it's at that time it was just a, a thing. <laughs> Shaggy, thank you for doing E Talk Open House. Your performance is outstanding. I like entertaining people. I like seeing people hands in the air, losing their minds, smile, scream, walk out of my concert. 
and lose their voice. I, I love that. That That is everything to me because I, I feel like I'm bringing joy, so much joy, you know, on something that I love to do, you know, that brings me so, so much joy. We're not going to be back out live until next year. You know, it is, it is what it is. And yeah. it, it sucks for me. I've never ever sat down a whole year and not, and not tour. It's, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs>